zum Hausmeister also to introduce uh, Ralf Birkenmeier. Um, he will give us an uh, update on the solution SLR. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to give you a further update of the solution SLR truck coated balloon. How to? Does it work? I can't pull. Okay, this is my conflict of interest. You have seen this draft before. It really depicts our journey over the last 40 years from Poba to second generation tracheluting stands, which is our present standard of care. It's a very good present standard of care. We have good early results with drug looting stands, but they are still not perfect, as we have an annual 2% stent-related event rate over the years, and this doesn't seem to stop after five years and not even after 10 years. So there's room for improvement, and the idea is obviously to do matter-free PCI, which would bring us back to where we came from, POBA with a provisional DS, or plus provisional stenting. Uh, why do we think we could be better now than some decades ago? Because uh, we have better tools for lesion preparation nowadays, as you've just seen uh, in the previous talk. Uh, we have first-generation paclitaxel drug-coated balloons. We have second-generation serolimus drug-coated balloons. And we might have working or functioning scaffolds in the future. What could the solution technology add to our momentarium? First of all, of course, it's a Zerolimus drug-coated balloon. Second, it has quite a unique uh, reservoir technology. So the Zerolimus is contained in uh, micro-reservoirs made of um, a bioresorbable polymer. And this is embedded into a phospholipid plant on the balloon. And this uh, phospholipid plant really enables these micro-reservoirs to go directly to the vessel wall very fast. And uh, most of the micro spheres really adhere to the vessel wall and don't go, don't go to the distal vascular bed, which makes it possible to coat the balloon with a small amount of uh, active medication. You've seen it before. The drug release kinetics from the micro reservoirs is very similar to what we see in second generation Everolimus eluting stents uh, with release kinetics over 90 days and uh, tissue concentration is still present at 90 days, very different from the crystalline um, serolimus eluting, drug eluting balloons, which are there at the present. So that's the theory. Obviously, uh, we're interested in clinical data. The clinical situation now is in Europe. We have a class one indication for drug-coated balloons, only for instant restenosis. But obviously, all current randomized trials with paclitaxel coated balloons look for de novo lesions in different subsets of patients uh, in acute and coronary syndromes. And from this background, you will understand the clinical program for the solution balloon, which is quite ambitious. Uh, the first demand was completed in Asia with 56 patients. It's a typical safety study. And now they embarked on randomized trials. The duty is definitely to do an ISR trial, which has already started enrollment in Europe and uh, is in the initiation phase in the US. And the big project, the ambitious project, is a large de novo study, which will enroll more than 3,300 patients in Asia and Europe. And it will be a randomized trial comparing a DB-only strategy versus a DS strategy. And this trial is already enrolling in Europe. There might be also a de novo study here in the US in the meantime, we have additional data presented for the balloon, the syrup registry from Lucerne, which is a single center registry. So you have already seen the first in man data. It was a typical safety study with uh, the primary endpoint of freedom from device and procedure related mortality at 30 days. And a uh, secondary main efficacy endpoint of angiographic late lumen loss at six months binary reach stenosis and diameter stenosis, percent diameter stenosis at six months. Uh, the first in man allowed to be included de novo lesions and instant restenotic lesions. 
The majority of patients included had de novo lesions, 84%. The mean lesion length was rather short, 11 millimeters. But the reference diameter in this Indian population was also small at 2.2 millimeters. At six months, there was only one MACE event, which was a target lesion revascularization in an ISR patient. This is again the late lumen loss curve, which has one outlier, which was a TLR patient, but still for the whole cohort, uh, the mean late lumen loss was 0.26 millimeters. Of note on the right hand side is that uh, the initial gain was quite impressive with aggressive balloon dilatation, which led only to uh, one bailout stenting. This data you've already seen, they were presented at this conference. It's uh, the late lumen loss in the de novo cohort, which was, had a mean late loss of 0.16 millimeter, and a very straight curve, which means uh, the balloon worked quite uniformly in all patients. These are the data from the SIROP trial, which were presented last year at TCT. Uh, the people from Lucerne went a little different way. Half of the patients had a hybrid strategy with DS and DCP, and uh, only half of the population had a DCP-only strategy. They included complex long lesions, calcified lesions, and CTO lesions. The mean balloon length was more than 44 millimeters. In spite of that, the clinical results were quite encouraging with a low TLF and TLR rate of 3% at six months, a TVR rate of 0.8%, and an all cause death rate of 0.8%. Let me briefly come back to the Solution de Novo study. As I said before, it's already enrolling in Europe. It's a pure de novo lesion study without instant restenosis. The only exclusion criteria for lesions is left main, CTO, and stamy lesions. Patients are randomized after the initial coronary angiography. They expect a bailout stenting rate of 30% in the DB only group. The analysis will be intention to treat. So let me summarize the solution. SLR has been developed to deliver a DS-like Linus solution profile to optimize transfer and to maximize cellular uptake of serolimus. Initial results in FIM and real world registries are promising in terms of safety and efficacy. Solution de novo is the largest DEB randomized controlled trial to date with over 3,000 patients, powered for superiority at five years versus DS. The trial is at present enrolling in Europe and will evaluate the performance of the DB strategy versus DS strategy in de novo lesions. Thank you for your attention.